This is Caleb from Beartooth. You are listening to Louder. So I'm here with Caleb, now known from Beartooth. Yeah, yeah. How are you doing? I'm good, man. Just yeah. hanging out. Last Thanks. show, the tour today. So, okay. fly home in the morning. I am very ready. <laughs> um, how was Thanksgiving? It was awesome. Actually, our label, uh, Records, they got us like a room kind of thing, and like brought a chef in. It was so over the top of them. It was very awesome, but. Basically, we had a really cool Thanksgiving lunch, which we rarely get to have because most of the time you're on tour during Thanksgiving and you can't really do anything. Okay, so it feels like all of a sudden, Beartooth is everywhere. Huh. So, do you break down the success story or is it another one of those uh, 10 years overnight success story? I don't know, man. It just, it just kind of happened. Like, I mean, obviously, I, you know, I've been in a band previously and that, I think, gave it a little bit of a kickoff point, mostly just people I knew in the industry, just to kind of help us get our feet off the ground. But and once it started happening, it's just been nonstop. I just call it, like, I just say that I've been riding the wave. That's what I call it, because, I mean, <laughs> basically expected none of this to happen like this, like, so fast. It's crazy. And... Uh, <laughs> yeah, we don't have any like agenda or any plans. We just kind of get offers to do stuff, and we go do it. And yeah, we're just letting it happen, you know. Um, I know that the first EP was called Sick, mm -hmm. and the album, the debut album, is called Disgusting. There are rumors online that since things kind of happen differently now, and you're a bit happier, that it might be called Sprinkles and Taco Bell. <laughs> yes, is that is definitely title? that is the working title of the new album. Okay, so, <laughs> so things have been changing. Yeah, dude, stuff's been good, man. Okay. I mean, that record, well, both of those, they really helped me out through a lot of stuff, and uh, just a lot of my like depression and things I was going through. And I'm honestly just feel like I'm in a great place now. So uh, writing is definitely much easier. It, like I guess not easier. Writing is much, much brighter in a sense like personally I mean ser the the songs are still going to be heavy stuff it's still going to be a bare tooth record it's not like going to be all sunshine and roses but uh, I'm not it's going to be a lot less self deprecating probably a, more like being uh, intense about other subjects you know okay, though here's a challenge nobody's ever done a hardcore album about My Little Pony <laughs> you know I I think I think that might be. Like that? <laughs> I think I might have to pass, okay. but I'm not 100% yeah, on that. Yet. Gonna we'll take see offense where that, that goes. We'll see where that one goes. Um, so, talking about the lyrics, I was told by many artists, and I think even you said it a few times, that it helped you deal with the pain and struggle. Um, but would you see it as some sort of an invitation for a conversation? Like fans would come up to you and say, let's talk about it, or is it just, I want to talk about it on stage and that's it? Let's put it behind me. Uh, at this point, I'm pretty over all that stuff. I mean, I've talked to tons of people about it. I've played hundreds of shows singing these words. And I mean, at first it was definitely something I needed to like work through. But now that I'm kind of over all that stuff and I'm in a different place personally, um, it's more of just like a like looking back on a different period of my life every night when I sing it and it's cool to do it live obviously with so many other people all singing the words as well it's more of just like a community thing and uh, kind of everybody like just being in one place to be happy and have fun you know it's really good I know that you write in some sort of a metaphorical way, mm -hmm. so I'm guessing you have some fans that come up to you and tell you, yeah, I went through the same thing, I was also raped by a dolphin. <laughs> Just because the metaphor was too thick for them. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, majority of the time everybody thinks I'm just saying everything literally, so like, I, you know, it is weird. I actually did a podcast recently with uh, my friend Shane who sings in Silverstein that we actually cleared up a ton of that which was really cool but yeah it is weird sometimes writing in like straight metaphors just because for me I'm really comfortable with it and like I just really enjoy it for some reason it kind of speaks to me 
But I do understand how I can be saying something and nobody has a clue what I'm actually talking about. And it can be kind of odd sometimes, but I think people just need to kind of read into it more. Yeah. Okay. Um, I feel like you don't like talking about Attack Attack, but on the other hand, um, I mean, it kind of led you to writing all those stuff, so I'm guessing that period in your life was not amazing. But on the other hand, it brought you here. Yeah, so no, what I've, I mean, what I've said about that is like, yeah, it's, it, I, again, even like the old songs and all that, it's, well, not old songs, but the records of Beartooth that have been out for a couple of years now, it's like, it was a part of my life in the past, and I'm just moving on to other things, and, uh, yeah, that, I mean, that specifically, I will say, yeah, I'm thankful for it, obviously, it made me who I am, and it taught me a lot of what to do and what not to do on the road, and, um, but, yeah, it's not my, I'm, I'm not just, you know, <laughs> I've done plenty of interviews where they're like, oh, you were in Attack Attack before, how's that going, or how was that, and, like, new life band, i you know, definitely past the point of <laughs> wanting to keep diving into that, you know. Hey, were you ever asked about being Gale in Hunger Games? Being Gale in Hunger Games? I've never seen the Hunger Games. Really? I don't know that reference. So now you have to watch I, it because okay. apparently you're in it. All right, I'll take that. <laughs> okay, um, I've seen a few comments that you made about bands selling VIP tickets. So that bands can meet them and get a t-shirt and a photo op. Mm -hmm. um, you guys don't do it. Is that well, a principle? No, no. I mean, we, we do, kind of. What we, what we do is we're not going to charge you for, like, just meeting us. Like, what we do is we put together, like, if people want to do it, it's kind of like a special package where, like, you say the thing is 40 bucks, whatever. You get the ticket prices included in that. There's a t-shirt included in that that's, like, a special t-shirt. There's, like, a poster or whatever. You're basically just paying for, like, the ticket and then, like, the merch and whatever, and then you can just, like, come in and we all hang out. We don't do, like, all right, get in line, here's your marker, walk up, you know. We literally, last time, I mean, it's been a while because the last time we did a headline other than this was over a year ago, but it was really fun when we did it. We literally all just would go out and we'd all just hang out for, like, a half hour and just kind of... Before the show? Yeah, yeah. How about hanging out after the show? I'm not too much of a hangout after the show yeah. kind of guy. I, I just, like, well, for one, for my voice, I try and be really quiet after the shows for, like, a good while. And, like, I usually after the show, it's kind of like you get, you walk out the door and get, like, bombarded by a lot of people, and I get, like, super anxious by that. Just, I mean, obviously, from hearing some of my previous songs, that's some, you know, anxiety and depression and stuff is, like, a thing I've dealt with, but it just makes me feel really uncomfortable when people are like, "Hey, like, can I picture?" Blah, 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 blah. I'm just like, would much rather hang out and like have a conversation, but there's never time for that. And I feel bad because I like, I genuinely want to do that, and I wish I didn't get so anxious about it. But uh, yeah, I'm more of a catch me before the show, before I'm kind of like in my own world thing. Okay, so if, hang out. if a fan would walk up to you and one on one tell you that you've been a role model. Yeah. Would that be something that you'd be more comfortable with, or is it something well, I mean, that still stressed you out? Well, it doesn't like stress me out. That's I'm like that's cool. Like I appreciate it, and I would just say thank you. <laughs> you know, I don't really. I was as well. I just don't really know what to like say to that. I'm not gonna be like <laughs> fuck yeah, I am. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> but uh, you know what I mean. Like that's just not really me. I know some yeah. people really get off on that stuff, and they like love just being praised by people, but. Uh, I'd just be like, thank you, and thanks for listening to the music and enjoying it, and like probably just have a conversation with them if I had time. The thing that also sucks is there's never enough time out here. <laughs> like, there's always something to do. Like today, we walked out to go. We had to go do like a big press thing somewhere else, and there were two people outside, and they, they were like, "Can we like get a picture?" And we're like, "We literally are already late for this thing," and they're like, "Just real quick." So we ran over and like. I just felt bad because it, it makes it like feel insincere when in reality we're just really short on time. <laughs> but like, yeah, I don't know. it can get awkward sometimes. Okay, how do you feel when Crossfaith invited you to uh, contribute your vocals on a track? It was great. I love those guys, and it was just a really fun thing to do. I mean, they're. Does it happen a lot? Um, it's just that one song from the record, but we met. At Slam Dunk Festival, I believe, it was the first time we hung out. And then um, all of the Dan's Warped Tour in the States, we were on the same stage. So 
so we hung out constantly. And yeah, I mean, they're, they're awesome. And how about, was it Silvertooth? And yeah. And it was We Came as Beartooth or something like that? <laughs> yeah, we did, we did a couple of fun things like that. On Warp Tour, that's like the time to just mess around because <laughs> there's so many bands and uh, just, I don't know, there's always something to do. So Silvertooth, us and Silverstein just became like best friends on that tour. And we literally did a joint set where like we set up two full drum kits on stage, two, all of our gear basically was all set up on stage. And then we just would uh, like go back and forth, like playing song for song, and then we would do like songs together. And it was just an absolute, it was super fun. Just final more questions. Um, I heard that your wife is British. She is. Um, so is there some sort of a battle between which U.S. is better, the U.S. of A, or the U.S. of K? <laughs> uh, I mean, we're you know I'm American, she's British. We live in America now. But I spend a lot of time over here. I love both. They honestly both feel like home at this point, just because it's been so many years that I've been doing both. You know. So if you're gonna have kids, are they gonna say aluminum or aluminium? <laughs> That, I have no idea. That is some way future me problems. <laughs> okay, uh, maybe a more recent problem. What would happen if your wife would bring home a cat? Oh, I hate cats <laughs> so much. She, I don't think she's a cat person, but I would... I don't know what a... That'd be weird. Also, my dog would probably eat the cat because it's <laughs> my dog's huge and wouldn't even know what it is. But probably wouldn't go over great. <laughs> okay. um, Caleb, do you have anything else to add? I think we're good. Okay. I think we covered it. Philip, thank you very much. Yeah.